threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. My sister just texted me. Got to make that happen. There we go. Done. That was a joke. It wasn't a joke. So my sister texted me and she said, <laughs> "Yeah." So two people walk into a bar. Sisters end the text. What am I doing here? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, here we are. Cam, we're gonna talk about stuff. How about. are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling mm-hmm. saucy today? Pretty ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty ready, ready to go. go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about uh, on the podcast? Yeah. Um. I'll be honest. This topic got me a little, little jumpy, mm-hmm. a little scared. So, yeah. um, you guys have all witnessed and felt the problems mm-hmm. with the supply chain. Yeah, it's we're going to talk about it. It's a thing, and discuss how you can kind of prevent the damage of yeah. waiting on that mm-hmm. semiconductor. Just I hate that, that single semiconductor. Yeah, you just ordered. It's back. There's like one semiconductor that's <laughs> like uh, disrupting the whole supply <laughs> chain. <laughs> Like, everything hinges on that. <laughs> and now we're back to the pirate thing. Arr. Sorry, we were doing a pirate voice I've before. I've got semiconductors <laughs> out on my boat. Um, no one will unload them. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, we're going to talk about where yeah. what you know where this disruption come from. Well, we know COVID, but, like, mm-hmm. why, why is it still a problem? Mm-hmm. How can it continue to be and probably end up a bigger problem? Yeah. And how we can be protected. Beautiful. Condomize ourselves. I don't even know if that's a <laughs> Prophylactic word. is just. So, um, yeah. Okay. Kim, mm. you want to know who doesn't have a supply chain issue? Oh, yeah. Battle Box. It's true. Actually, it's not true. They have had a few I'm issues. Sure they have. They've had They've had to deal with stuff, but they get through them with ease because they got the best people in the biz doing what they got to yeah. do over there. Because most subscription boxes, they're full of samples and junk you'll never use but not BattleBox. It is the monthly subscription box for all people, full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, BattleBox sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you'd normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here's a sampling of what users received this month. The LED Lenser ML6750 Lumen Lantern. Did you say 750? Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm, I did. And then we got the Rapid Pure Pioneer Straw. Ooh. Yeah, you ever heard of that? Rapid Pure. Pioneer. Rapid Pure. Ooh, that's perfect. <laughs> All this badassness starts at just 30 bucks a month. That's nothing. No. You guys, 30 bucks? I mean, come on. Yeah. A box full of badassness. 30 bucks. Amen. Pretty cool. They've shipped almost 1 trillion boxes and one best men's subscription box of 2017. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Just get on the interwebs, you know, use your Tor browser, use Google Chrome, use Mozilla Firefox, (laughs) whatever else you got. Go to trybattlebox.com slash browser. Netscape Navigator. (laughs) Navigator. (laughs) (laughs) That's trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Get your first battle box plus a free knife. Listener reviews starts now. Seriously, no better time to get a battle box. Really? For you or your <clears throat> loved yeah. ones. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know, like Christmas, there's always somebody you're like, I don't know what to get them for. What am I going to get? What am I going to get for? What am I going to get them for? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to get them for? You know, you don't think about the words that come out of your mouth. It's hard. But yeah. This time of um, year. Mm. Just give, let battle box decide what they get. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I made the Russian salt. I can't do it right now. Okay. I made a Russian salad soup. Mm. That's the title of this. That's what I need. It wasn't as terrible as it sounds, but thank you for all you do. Start my day every day with you guys since I found it. Booyah. Why haven't you done zombies? It's Halloween, please. Yeah, um, we have. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> done zombies. Go way back. Yeah, but actually we just re-released the <clears throat> zombie episode. That's right. Yeah. So, and um, that was a fun episode. I would love to redo it. We may, yeah. we may do it. We There's only it. so many zombie themed episodes we can do. And so it was kind of yeah, it was, it's saturated out there with yeah, yeah. zombie information. Zombie saturation. That's yeah, right. It sure <laughs> is. It's a mad, mad world. Let me tell you about China. Oh boy. They 
or problem causer. <laughs> That's no joke. <laughs> Never ending. No, seriously. So, just this is a quick rundown of the last couple of weeks. Oh, gosh. Chinese Air Force running sorties inside Taiwan's air identification zone. Sons of bees. Beijing expanding its space program, what? launching three more astronauts into uh, to its space station, and accelerating its tests of hypersonic missiles <sighs> meant to defeat American missile defenses. Sure. The release of a top Hawaii, uh, how, how, what is that I don't brand? Know. The Chinese, like. Huawei. Is that how you say it? Yes. Huawei. Uh-huh. Executive to two Canadians and two Americans in what looked like a prisoner swap. Beautiful. At the same time, the U.S. announced it would provide nuclear submarine technology to Australia mm. with the prospect that its subs could pop up undetected along the Chinese coast. Anyway. Wow. Tensions are hot. Oh, they are. And China says it does not want to return to Cold War times. Oh, um, of course. They say China will stay committed to promoting win-win cooperation and, con- and contribute to the economic development win-win. of the Asia-Pacific region. Hmm. Although we want to consume Taiwan and screw Japan. Ooh, those dirty suckers. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, hmm. China, yeah. always. Always a problem. Scary. But the one thing, I read an article recently that talked about how China in its history has yeah. always been one when squeezed will like it just attack randomly. Like when it's Don't under pressure, it. it's the first yeah. one to like an, initiate go. an attack. Mm. Un, un, like just completely out of the blue. So that's a little scary. So mm. anytime they can just be like, script, we'll just attack. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah. okay. watch out for Canada or Canada. <laughs> yeah, I'm so Can- I hate those Canadians. <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> but little. anyways, watch out for China, huh? Mounties coming across the border. Yeah. Coming to so. get us. Cold War times. It does seem Great. like that with them for sure. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Scary. So uh, this actually was an article from last month, but it goes right along with what we're talking about today. And it, it has a lot to do with preppers. So I thought it would be interesting just to talk about this in Mad Mad World. Yeah. Emergency food supplier Augustin Farms. I'm sure we've all heard about those. If you're a prepper, you know Augustin Farms. Stuff. You probably have some Augustin Farms stuff. But they have ceased operations for 90 days. No joke, huh? Starting last month, citing global raw material shortages and substantial delays in procurement and production. <sighs> That's terrifying. Oh, uh, yeah. Screw your 25-year shelf life foods. <laughs> yeah. On their website, they posted the following message. Due to an extremely high order volume through all sales channels, we are currently not able to receive any orders through our website. All orders previously placed will still be shipped. But uh, they said 90 days, we just got to stop because, you know, they've had a high volume of, of orders, plus they're having a hard time getting the, the raw material stuff, so... Yeah, that's crazy. Welcome to 2021. Yeah. Y'all. Due to word shortage, the end. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, we, hey. So anyways, I, I just felt like that went They're know, not perfectly. The only company. Yeah. yeah and perfectly a... along with the topic today, which is preparing for supply chain disruptions. <sighs> this has been something that has kind of been obviously on our minds for a while, it, and it, it's been in the news. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. It's probably just going to get worse. Yeah. Right? For sure. You know, uh, <clears throat> we live in a very convenient time. Sure, yeah, we do. Go to the grocery store, ran out of milk, boom, go get your milk. You have go milk. Go get your cereal, go mm-hmm. get, like, we have an, an amazing supply chain. Mm-hmm. But we have learned just in this last two years mm-hmm. how, like, super fragile yeah. our supply chain is. Fragile. And, like, mm. the simplest things can interrupt the whole thing. Like, like <laughs> pandemic much. was not simple, but, you know, mm-hmm. you get a freaking freight like a barge wedged in a canal <laughs> yeah, will screw the whole world's <laughs> economy. Stupid. I'm like, it's super weird. How dumb is that? But, um, you know, currently mm. we, it's really weird right now because the demand's high. People are shopping. They're wanting things. Yeah. They're at home. They have stimulus to spend money saved. You know, costs are going up because the production just can't quite keep up. Yeah. And workers blow. They don't want to work. Yeah, there's a lot of weird factors happening. There's like right now. some that are like there's an overabundance of like truck drivers. Yeah. But to get those trucks loaded now, that like there's a ton of weird stuff. Like you would think the limitation or the yeah. issue is where, you know, you're like, well, we need to hire more truck drivers. It's not there. Yeah. Like it's in different places. So we were going to talk a little bit well, about Well, there's, there's so many weird things going on with COVID too. And like the, um, you know, mandates with a lot of companies that are putting out, say, hey, you got to get the vaccine. People are like, screw you. Yeah. I'll that quit. Too. They do. I'll and quit. And they have like 30 years experience. Yeah. 
they're a good worker Mm -hmm. and they just don't want to deal with that. Yeah. And it does. It's like, there's no skilled operators to do certain things that only a few, a handful of people can do. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's one of the big things that's happening with, which I'll talk about, like the shipments and those freights. Like they don't have the crane operators and they don't have to get stuff. I don't know. Just a mess. Anyway. Um, but like, I never thought in my time would I ever see this kind of thing happen. Cause I'm like, we you have, don't think we about it. Such, well, you have so many conveniences and like everything at like our fingertips. Like, I think I, I think, want wait, boom, yeah, you'll have it tomorrow. I think the pandemic was a huge eye opener for a lot of people because nobody had ever really thought about it before, right? Until they went to the store and they couldn't get toilet paper or they couldn't get yeah. like hand sanitizer. Right. They're like, wait, why not? Why can't I get it? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. <clears throat> and then they get a little bit educated, like, oh, it's like a supply chain. It's a supply None and demand None of us thing. understand, like, the, yeah. com- the complexity of it's not how like, yeah. a supply chain works. You don't p- pluck a thing of toilet paper off the shelf and another one just grows no. up. Like, it has no. to get shipped there. Yeah. There's a whole process. Yeah, this, and speaking of toilet paper, that's one thing, like, when I was reading these articles about why, one, you know, People panic. They're like, mm. everybody wants toilet paper. We're going to be homebound. I need toilet paper. I need all the toilet paper. Mm-hmm. And the big problem with toilet paper is that, like, it's huge. It's bulky. Mm. Like, the yeah. grocery store can't store all that It back takes there. up a lot of space. So they're like, we're yeah. going to take, like, most grocery stores hold on hand, like, a week's worth of stuff. Mm. Yeah. And so once that supply got wiped out, <laughs> yeah. the, there was, like, no way of, re, re uh, like, stacking it. Yeah. They couldn't get it. And then also, what did the United States do to like ramp up production of toilet paper? It did nothing. Oh, yeah, for it sure. It hasn't done anything. Yeah. Because um, if you look at like production of toilet paper, it's like a four story high uh, machine that yeah. costs millions of dollars to yeah. roll toilet uh-huh. paper. Yeah. <laughs> and then again, if you're going to ship, you know, like 600 crates of canned goods mm-hmm. or like four things of massive things of toilet, toilet paper. paper. What's yeah. more valuable? What's so it's just like, it's weird. It comes down to they, they're not going to spend all this money on something that isn't essential, but at the same time, it's something that's needed. And, and that's where you get kind of these, like, it's perfect. You don't think about the chain being an actual like chain, but there are like, you lose that link. Yeah. Simple as like a uh, production of microchips. It's like, it goes in everything. Like yeah. automated trucks, automated systems that pick up your item at Amazon and ship it to you. Yeah. And like once those things get broken, like the whole chain is broke. So yep. um other things that caused this, you know, we we had the pandemic that obviously shut down the country. Was it March? It was when it really hit. Yeah, twenty twenty. So you got, you know, several weeks that were like locked down, continue longer in other areas, and people that work and you know in these public, you know, restaurants or supplied food to restaurants. Once they were out of the, out of work and truck drivers didn't have anywhere to like deliver. So what did people do? Either they went on unemployment, they waited for stimulus or they just found another career job. So it's like, it just like, it just cascaded, Mm -hmm. you know, through the whole thing. Um, and then all of a sudden we start getting back into the end of the year. People start traveling. restrictions are lifted and people try to go back to normal and a lot are still working at home. So they're ordering. And the big thing is we weren't spending very much money on services. We were spending money on like goods. Yeah. Goods. Yeah. And then you know, like there's, there's a huge imbalance there. Um, and so it just couldn't kick back into, well, for one, you know, they cancel all the stuff that they've, they normally stock up on and they, like a lot of companies will pre-order things mm-hmm. and have them just kind of continuously coming. But when you get shut down, you're not moving anything. They canceled all those orders and all of a sudden they got to send out all these orders. Yeah. And they don't have a way of getting enough demand for what was, you know, happening. And that's, that's still happening. And so it just like, it just continues and continues. And then come March 24th of this year in the Suez canal that skyscraper sized container ship gets wedged yeah gets it runs the ground like <clears throat> in the middle of the canal and blocks like one of the biggest you know yeah um areas of freight in the world so it's like it's it didn't crazy help. how fragile just it is one it's little like, thing <clears throat> yeah we had the pandemic and then we had the the these big old container ships get stuck mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden boom there's all this mass production 
it all ships over to the United States. And right now, I think there's like 70 plus crate ships just sitting out there. Yeah. And all of them have something like 200,000 20 foot containers oh my gosh. filled with goods yeah. for consumers. They can't be unloaded, they can't be shipped. And I, um, so California itself, those two ports, I think it's the uh, LA port and the um, Long Beach. Long Beach. It's like 40% of um, international goods come through those ports. Wow. 40%. That's and, a lot. And then since it's all Pacific Coast, mm-hmm. you got to take trucks to get those loaded and take all it the to way the through. east. Yeah. So it's like, they, right now the issue there is like truck drivers are like, most of us are ready and there's there's a lot of truck drivers that are able to like ship, but there's no crates. There's no goods because it's all just go. sitting out there because there's nobody to unload it. And there's no room to unload it. So it's just like stacking, stacking. There's no backup plan. I think That's we're going to end up just making a bridge to China <laughs> with, with those, those cranes just drive yeah. over there. But yeah, it just gets worse and worse. And like I was saying before, most grocery stores and, and places, they function on a on the just-in-time yeah. logics mode, logistics mode. In the system, waste cut back, warehousing costs are reduced. Like the, t- you know, the toilet paper, like you were saying, it's huge, it's bulky, doesn't store well. So they just have a small supply in every location, and that's along with like a lot of different foods. Um, but we were talking about <clears throat> the chain system being broken. So we get the pandemic, we get people not working, we get people changing professions, we don't have skilled people working in those areas. When when everything starts to ramp back up. And then you get, <clears throat> the problem is you get this uh, massive surge of like orders and people wanting to build and, and buy things. And that's where, when you don't have anybody producing the goods, for example, another one was wood. Yeah. So they had this massive urge to like build houses. And we saw the housing market was the highest in 14 years, along with auto sales. And car producers they didn't expect that so they weren't ordering like the semiconductors and all that stuff that goes into the vehicles yeah and then all of a sudden there's this huge order for them and the rest of the world needs them and the and the one thing i'd read it's a big problem is like the companies that supply like these parts to make like usually auto production goes through like you know, you got a dashboard, and that dashboard's yeah. got to be sent to another company. Puts the airbag in. The airbag company's got to get microchips from this other company. Yeah, that company's not going to let them know why they're held up because they'll lose the contract. Exactly. And this company will want to purchase, and so it's like there's all this miscommunication and poor communication because nobody wants to lose the work, but they're unable to get the parts that they need to help the other. Anyway, so I think like you you experienced that with your vehicle. You ended up having them call you and like, hey, we want your vehicle that's used because (laughs) we sell those faster than anything. Yeah, I think we ended up making more than we actually bought it for after like two years. Yeah. Because they're just in such high demand because nobody could get them. Yeah. You know? And the sales, like, you know, that's where they want to sell more than they do. And so, yeah. But anyway, so that was the thing that affected us too is like... um the shortages led to commodities being way more expensive. Yeah. So we see an increase in costs of just regular goods. You know, meat's been crazy and it's going to get way worse. Mm -hmm. The production and all that goes into that. And then you've got um, just building materials. Like home builders briefly sent prices to like 17, what is it? $1,711 per thousand board feet last month. An (sighs) amount that implies a typical... 2,000 square foot house would require more than 27,000 in framing lumber alone Mm -hmm. relative to the lumber bill of about 7,000 before the pandemic. Yeah. So my sister at at this time was was getting ready to build a house and they got a, they got a bid like right around the time where it was like skyrocketed and they're like, well, it's going to take a long time to get the lumber for one thing. And this is how much it's going to cost. What? Yeah. And then recently it's It's come come down like, it's come down a lot. They're like, yeah, like it was like 40% cheaper. God, like so a few crazy. months later, yeah. they're like, so I saying. guess it's good that the it was backed up because right. it was so, they saved so much money, you know? There's so, there's like so many things that are like transient too. It's like, yes. boom, it's expensive. All of a sudden it, it, there's a ton of production and prices go down, mm-hmm. but then something else is driven up a ton. So yeah. right now, yeah, we've got, we've got bad production. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got a lot of production, but we don't have a lot of, a lot of it comes down to like delivery and shipping. All of that's been, you know, doubled, tripled. Mm-hmm. And then there's, um, like, 
I, another thing was like parts for the for the trucking companies, like like a drivetrain or something. Mm-hmm. I guess <clears throat> like I was reading a forum where it's this particular drivetrain that almost like seventy or eighty percent of the trucks use is like back ordered past twenty twenty two, like into like March or April, and it's like you break a drivetrain, you're you're done. You're done, yeah. So, um, but yeah, that drives up the inflation of, of goods of, of our, of our food. And that's just, it's going to get worse. So right now is the time that we've got to figure out, like, don't expect things are just going to kind of settle down. Yeah. We've seen, you know, who knows, a, another boat could get wedged in some canal yeah. somewhere and you're just going to go back to where we're at. We have to unload all those ships and more and more keeps coming. People keep placing more and more orders or changing orders. Yeah. So you get like more and more crates. It, it's just, it's just an event that's not going to ease up until they predict like 2023. Maybe. Yeah, that's that's what I've seen. The prediction is like 2023, and it like right now is like the worst time because everybody's trying to shop for Christmas. Yeah, um, you know, and like the food for Thanksgiving dinners is like insane. It's hard yeah. to find turkeys. There's like so many weird things going on. Yeah, um, so like that, I could go on and on about yeah. all these disruptions, but you you can see. Just how grocery stores function, how our our, our system's fragile, and yes. how any event, any more events that come along yeah. are just going to screw us for more years. There's been so many. It's It's been like a perfect storm almost for it so really many has. different things. But obviously COVID, you know, some inflation and uh, then like the stimulus stuff kind of screwed things up too because everybody had all this extra money. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't helpful. And so they had to, they wanted to go it's spend it. in a way, but then yeah. it just ended up being more problematic. Oh, man. It, it's a crazy deal. And so these disruptions, you know, what are the key areas that they affect? Um, we, we've talked about some of those already, but let's talk about the ones that are really going to affect us, you know, yeah. personally. Hit home. Yeah. And, and the number one that I always think of is food. That's the one that scares me the most is the grocery stores st- staying stocked up. The food being affordable, for one thing, because obviously when there's a supply chain disruption, it just jacks up the prices. And we've seen that. Um, the price of, of food have just, they've skyrocketed in a lot of different areas like Cam talked about. I think you talked about meat, right? The prices of meat. Um, yeah. So, the other thing too is the shrinkflation, where they like make product size. Oh yeah, you don't see it. Yeah, but it's but you yeah. go from ten ounces to seven ounces. That and makes they a huge create difference. a whole new box. Yeah. to save them money. And but it's you don't the even same, notice the difference. same price. Yeah. So this the food is the one I think will hurt people the most because it's the one that you're that is something that you deal with every single day. Yeah. It seems like right. So I, I looked at a statistic: the American Red Cross says that the the majority of Americans have less than three days of food on hand. <laughs> three <laughs> days of food. That is nothing, you guys. That's absolutely nothing. And I think it's even worse in some you know um, urban areas like. New York, where yeah. they're just basically stopping at the store every day because they don't have a room for a big fridge or no, a no. deep freezer or things like that. So it hits them even harder, I think. Um, so um, like like Cam said, the systems that the grocery stores use, basically they keep about a week's worth of food on hand for their regular customers at a time. But we know if there's panic, that week's worth of food probably dwindles down to like three days, yeah. right? Because everybody's like, oh, crap, we yeah. need food, so let's go buy everything Everybody. we can. Yeah. So that's that's a bad deal. So um, with food, too, on average, the food travels about 1,500 miles from the farm to your plate. Jeez. So that, again, shows you how the supply chain needs to be working perfectly for everything to get to your, to your house. You know what I mean? 1,500 miles. And we're talking about, you know— all these different things with vehicles and delivery services. Uh, as soon as those start going down, your food is in danger. Really, <laughs> so you know what I mean. Um, and we know what food shortages do. I mean, they turn normal people into horrible people. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, food is the number one area that that scares me. And we'll talk. We're going to talk later about what to do about this. And we've we've talked about it a million times, but. Um, that's the, that's the area for me, uh, with these uh, shortages and these supply chain disruptions that really, really scares me. And, and something that's even related to that is, is fuel gasoline, right? Um, and this type of shortage, basically it affects every other asset in the market. As soon as there is a fuel shortage, nothing can get delivered. Not one thing can get delivered, you know, so that's where it gets really, really bad is if there's a bad uh, fuel shortage, you know, truckers, they move basically everything in the entire 
economy. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Food, medicine. Where we used to goods. be like iron horse, like yeah. the, the train. No, it's no, it's truckers. It's truckers. You know, the trains still do. They do. But, they are, but you know, pretty but much directly everything. to the grocery store no. and all that. It's no, all they got to get from the train to the grocery <clears throat> store or the train to the Walgreens, whatever it is. You know, they have to have fuel to make that happen. And there's, there's you know, you know, electric vehicles that can only do so much. There's only a few of them out there right, right now. So this means... And to produce power typically is still yeah, using... It, using fuel, right? <laughs> yeah. So this means that there could be, you know, shortages for the average person too. You can't just go fill up your car. We're already seeing gas prices raising. They're, yeah. I mean, they're, it's insane. I had to fill up my truck the other day. I'm like, what the fudge I know. is going on? I this is ridiculous. Like watching it. I'm like, geez, 75 yeah. bucks. Yeah. And so, um, you know. I feel like I was in a U-Haul again. <laughs> I like know, going what's across going the on? Country. Um, so that, you know, this means higher prices. This could mean long lines, fights at the pump, all those crazy things that can happen. Pump fights. Pump fights. <laughs> pump fight club. Why don't you go to pump fights <laughs> this Saturday? You know? Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so fuel shortages scare me too with this supply chain thing. Um, <laughs> medicine is the next category. Yeah. Meds, medicine, healthcare, all those things kind of in one. Um, but that is basically about 20% of the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. And it's probably more than that now I'm because, sure. you know, everybody's on the 150% of the U.S. is on some sort of a drug. Some <laughs> synthetic medication. Yeah, it's, it's not good. So actually, it's 66% of U.S. <clears throat> adults are on a daily medication. BS. 66%. Wow. Uh, so that's, that's a lot. It's two thirds, <laughs> right? Um, and many of those are life-saving medications or like if they don't have them, they're going to die. A... I don't know what the percentage is, but it's a lot, right? So, and a lot of those are ones that keep people sane and not crazy and not like out biting your neighbor's ankles. Turning into the Joker. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent the Joker. So this is a, this is a bad thing to have disruption in this area. And we started to see a little bit of this with COVID, right? There, people we were did. scared. Um, and yeah, we had shortages on because certain generics so and... much of it came from China. <clears throat> they weren't sending stuff out. Uh, whoa, that was kind of a creepy time, wasn't it? When, when we thought that, oh, we're not gonna be able to get our meds, <laughs> yeah. right? So, um, that's a bad deal. And so this could mean if, if the supply chain is disrupted here, this could mean immediate deaths. Like just a bunch of people could die. Yeah. What are they going to do? You know what I mean? Um, it also means a lot of desperate people and a lot of sick people. Um, and then the fuel shortages could mean that, you know, emergency medical services could break down. True. I don't know. Are they going to run to your house if there's no fuel? Pushed on a gurney all the way to the hospital? <laughs> yeah, like four miles on a gurney. <laughs> you know, skateboard on the back of it, just put, trying to push you. I don't know what they're going to do, but... Uh, get on the hood. Yeah, yeah hop, on a, hop on the pegs on the back. <laughs> we'll get you there, you know? Um, a little bit scary. And then, you know, it comes down to the pharmacies, too. They could have bare shelves in days if, if all the supply chain breaks yeah. down. And so, bad deal. And I talked about emergency services a little bit, but this could also mean police services could be interrupted in some way because... There's no fuel. Obviously, they're going to get priority when it comes There's to no fuel. Bullet. There's no bullets. Can't shoot stuff. All the preppers have all the two, two, three. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got all the nine millimeter. The nine millimeter. It's a bad deal. But um, uh, if if the supply chain does get disrupted, there could be some. Can't forge any badges. You don't know who's police and who is. <laughs> I don't know. What's your badge number? Don't have a badge. <laughs> I don't know. Printer's down. <laughs> yeah. Can't get no metal. Can't get a microchip for the printer. <laughs> Ink's gone. Just carrying their gun. I don't have a holster. Yeah, no, I'm making it. Don't have a gun. I got to throw these bullets at you. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, fire Just carrying police. whips. <laughs> Cops oh, with come whips. on. No, we can't do that. <laughs> oh, that yeah. Is, that's not what I meant. Yeah, no, you just can't do but it. But like their weapon. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. But yeah, that I would be interpreted it. pretty bad. Yeah, that'd be horrible. Um, so fire, police, other emergency services could be slow or non-existent. Another area it could affect is electricity. And this this one is another one that affects everything, right? Uh, Seriously. Fuel shortages. How long is the power going to stay on? Who knows? If, they, if the people that work there can't get there for some reason. If the gas has to be pumped out of the tank in the ground. Yeah. Like. How do you do it? I don't and know. And then you got. Yeah, it just. Another cascading event. Yeah, so those, you know, there could be, a, it's just electricity could be in, in um, peril there if there's something going on. And then, I mean, entertainment, 
fast food, uh, goods, just regular products. Those are things that could really, and have, we've already seen, you know, um, everything can happy get a, meals go up happy 25 meals. cents they do right this means fast food this means movies iPhones uh, Android phones all the phones really um, you know Taco Bell shut down in our town yeah for a while it, 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 it didn't open until like noon yeah I'm like this is this is horrible and this is basically the apocalypse this is an outrage this is an outrage give me my <laughs> breakfast from Taco Bell right now I was thinking about going and you know down there and Pick it, you know, get a line. I know. And start yelling at people. <laughs> Promoting it for them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just, they're hiring people. And that's like, it, their problem wasn't they couldn't get goods. They couldn't get people. Yeah. It's so It was crazy a people shortage, you know? I don't get it. Wendy's is closed on Sundays now in town. What? Did you the? see that? No. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. There's a lot of weird stuff. Top Gun's coming out next millennium, yeah. I think. <laughs> Like, I don't know if it's, it's ever going to yeah, come out. I think out. the Jets will be dated at that yeah, point. I, it's like, what are those? Is this like a history channel <laughs> thing? What is it? It's dog fights. I've seen <laughs> I've seen this before. Um, did you see that Lunchables are in short supply? No. Yeah. They're, they're having a hard time. I don't even know what's in those. But it's short Meat, supply. cheese, I don't crackers? Think meat. No. Yes. It's, like, there's, <laughs> it's wonderful. I think it's rubber. Salted rubber. Yeah, but it tastes good. It is. That's all that matters. Um, you know, Christmas presents, we talked about this. They're going to be tough to come by. All Every microchip. Tickle me Elmo for, mm. it's like, super backwards. Yeah, you're going to have to get, like, tickle me El- Elma, <laughs> you know? <laughs> because they don't have that one no more. <laughs> tickle me Elmo. Yeah. This is a grandma in a little wheelchair. <laughs> um, what does that sound like a cat? <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> Did they, uh, what is the hot item this season? I don't know. I haven't seen. I heard it was like a casual preppers t-shirt. That's the <laughs> <Yeah>. hot item. <laughs> Gotta be. Oh, um, I saw an article that said KFC stopped advertising their chicken tenders because they are in short supply. Yeah, I've seen the chicken thing is like a big deal. Can't get no chicken. <laughs> weird. That is weird. See, but the nice thing is McDonald's doesn't have to worry about it because they don't even use real chicken. That's true. Their nuggets don't taste like chicken. Nugs. Oh, look, they taste great. But they don't taste like chicken. Yeah. No. They're not. It's not chicken. I don't know what that is. I think it's kangaroo. (laughs) Or. I hope they have a different alternative meat because chicken's not easy. I know. That's the thing, right? They're like, we're already out of it. (laughs) We've been using this compound paste for years. We got a a bunch of stuff we had in the freezer, so we'll be all right. (laughs) All their dark meat nuggets are still on storage. (laughs) Yeah. Bring those back out. Nobody knows. Nobody will feed it out. Just give them some extra fries in the bag. They won't complain. <laughs> give them three sweet sours instead of two. Yeah, why is it the sauce? Is like uh, Chick Fil A sauce was on back order. Yeah, that it. The thing is, you don't ever know, mm-hmm. and it pisses you off. Yeah, you're like, all right, can I get some uh, extra pickles? I don't have pickles. What? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll get um, extra mayo. Yeah. It's we don't like, got no mayo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you order? <clears throat> hamburger. We don't got hamburger. That, it's almost been that way at some yeah. places. It's weird, man. Can I get a taco? There's a Taco Bell. We don't have tacos. <laughs> you want some crispy cinnamon crunches? That's all we got. <laughs> got a whole bunch of those. Yeah, we got that. Um, and then the last thing I just want to talk about was the currency and the inflation aspect of this. Uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell, he recently said that the central bank thinks the recent surge in prices is a function of supply-side bottlenecks over which we have no control. Yeah. Obviously. As the pandemic wore on, many consumers were flush with cash. We talked about that. They wanted to buy stuff. But then the global supply chains hit bottlenecks, and then reopening wasn't very smooth, and then the prices spiked. Is the Everybody had money, but there wasn't much to buy. So it was like yeah. pure and economics. And people didn't really care. No. They're like, I'll pay I want that side by side. Government just gave me 3500 bucks. 10000 more, yeah. and I didn't earn I don't that care. stimulus. I don't care. I'm going to use it. Doesn't matter. And so... Yeah, you've got the greed that's on mm-hmm. the same side. It's yeah. like, well, crap, well, we're going to raise our prices. Yep. And so <clears throat> inflation is likely to increase and be with us for a while. Yeah. And it could be worse. You know, we don't know. And so. And price stick forever. Yep. And so that's probably, it's just another issue that you have to deal with with supply chain disruptions because it's, again, it's a cascading issue that we talked about. So. Yeah. Those are the areas that you really have to worry about when it comes to supply chain disruptions. Yeah. And all of us will be affected yeah, everybody. by this in 
all the ways, mm-hmm. forever and mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. But speaking of that bloody COVID-19, Ugh. it's not only screwed us with supply and demand, mm. but it's made us all more susceptible to cybercrime because we're going online. It's on the rise. We're ordering everything. Mm-hmm. And um, Surfshark is there to protect you. Yeah. You should really go get Surfshark because it's good, okay? It's a virtual private network that can protect you and all of your devices from online threats. Mm-hmm. Perfect time of year because you're going to be doing your shopping. Yeah. You're going to be looking for the Tickle Me Elma. Elma. <laughs> and <laughs> That's my wife's grandma's name. Is it? <laughs> great grandma. <laughs> rest, her, rest, in rest in peace. peace. She's a great lady. But I yeah, no, um, you are going to be going online a lot. Mm-hmm. And this is like when the peak... Identity, identity theft, identity theft. <laughs> Come, so you yeah. want to be protected. Sure. So Surfshark, the nice thing about them mm-hmm. is a subscription covers every device that connects to the internets. Yeah. You Fridge, go toaster. Protected, yeah. And you can just run it and you don't even know that you're like, it's, it sits in the background and mm-hmm. it shields your IP from being available to whoever wants to hack your computer. For sure. The awesome thing, too, is you can pick a server in the UK and watch whatever Netflix they have over there. Yeah. Okay. That was Australian. That sounds wonderful. But yeah. um, you can get this protection for 27 months for less than 60 bucks. Are you lying to me? No, I'm not. Well, that sounds you like a use lie. Casual Preppers on their website. Yeah. Get 27 months for fifty nine seventy six or something like that. Cool. And that one prescription... <laughs> Of protection. You rob me a prescription yep. for Surfshark, please? It will, um, if you don't know what you're doing and you just want to try That's it out. That's me. I don't know what I'm doing ever. No, these are, these, like, you don't understand how well they work until you try them. And you can okay. try them risk-free for 30 days. That's uh, the thing I really like about it. Yeah, that's rad. So, check them out. Surfshark.deal slash casual preppers. 60 bucks covers you for the next 17 years. Well, it's only a little over two years. But I would go get them right now. Beautiful. So, Cameron, we, we've we talked about this, the supply chain, what it is, the issues we're having now, and what it can affect. Yeah. So, what do we do, like, right now, short term, yeah, to get prepared for these son of a bitchin' issues <laughs> that we got to deal with? Seriously. Okay? And this, the, like, this is what, like, fueled me to be like, this is a good time. Obviously, we, we went past our prepper month. Yeah. But like mm. this is going to get worse. Things are going to get more costly. It's going to be harder to get um you know m- just regular su- supplies that you use every day. Mm-hmm. So, start with the basics. Kay. Start short term. Don't go after the auction farms cuz you can't order anything right now anyway. Can't do it. But look at the things that you're going to need right now to survive for, you know, week, two weeks. Just the simple stuff. You don't, you know, if you can't necessarily get like a 55 gallon drum, just every time you go to the store, buy some extra water to store. Yeah. You get a jug of water, buy, you know, more bottles of water. Yeah, a case of water, man. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that the supply and demand is going to rupture your water line and you're not going to have water to your house. Who knows? But as we've seen the last couple of years, everything is possible. Yep. And you just want to be prepared. And, and it's easy right now to, th- those things are available. The, the water has been restocked. Like, yeah. I don't see... Hardly any shelves barren right now. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah, it's great to prep for this, for these supply chain disruptions, but this water is great if there is a a natural disaster. Yeah. Uh, If there is a boil order in your area because there's some weird crap going on in the water. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Who knows? There's all these things. Plus, you can just take them out and drink them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Whenever you want. Maybe maybe summer comes and... There's an event in your neighborhood, mm-hmm. and you can just put it in the back and sell them for two bucks a piece. Yeah, make that dough, boy. <laughs> yeah. You know? But yeah, focus on the water mm. and, you know, get supplies to prepare water too. Get some chlorine, because yeah. that was back ordered for a long uh, Like, that got kind of cleaned out when everybody thought that Chlorine? You could, when you thought that you could drink Clorox. Oh, clear. Clorox. Chlorine, Clorox. <laughs> yeah. And then um, get treatment, tablets, filters, mm. different ways to pre- to prepare water. I love it. it end up contaminated from, you know, pipes and all that yeah. stuff. Anyways, focus on the water and you don't, like I said, you don't need 7,000 gallon drums. Just get the, the basic stuff that can mm. keep you good for two weeks. Sure. I Next, love it. stock your pantry. Yeah. When we, you know, if you buy like things that your kids like, like you buy some little teeny bags, we try and put like half of them down in 
you know, our food storage too. So Bags while you're what? getting your, none of your business, okay. <laughs> you know, just, like Lay's potato chips, sure. Doritos, like yeah. little it always simple comes back things to that are like for you. snacks. I'm <laughs> That's just always the first thing. Snack foods, I'm saying. <laughs> and then your, uh. Your, your canned goods. Yeah. Like, this is a perfect time. They they run a lot of different... Um, Cranberry sauce. Yeah, that Gotta, stuff. I had that in there. Did you? Because you got Thanksgiving coming up. I always oh, yeah. go too late. And, and there's no jellied get, get cranberry. Get stuff. It pisses me off. Yeah, you got to get it's that. like Western Family and it's Penn's Oil. Yeah. <laughs> it comes out in sludge. But yeah, no. Um, This is a good time. Everybody's buying food for Thanksgiving right now and getting mm-hmm. prepared for the holidays and the sweets and all the crap. It's a good time to just add extra into your shopping plan. You know what's a good time? It's a good time to go get all that clearance Halloween candy. That's true. There's a lot of that. Yeah. It always comes with candy with you. What's it with does. <laughs> hey, I love it. Love but no, it. it is. That's that's a great time to get all that stuff. Yeah. But these are these are not your long term, you know, twenty five year shelf life no. stuff that tastes like crap. This is the stuff that's available now. And one of the biggest things, and we always talk about this, is stock up your your freezers. Dude, gosh, good hell, Meats. do it. There's frozen, ter- there's yeah. frozen chicken, there's yeah, frozen veggies. All that stuff can be stored and used later. And it, the thing is, we're coming into winter, yeah, in the North America area right now. Winter's coming. So mm. this stuff is even better because if you have a power outage, yeah. you can just put it outside for, for sure. You know, it's, it's easy. Like, yeah. So. Frozen goods are great, and these are a good thing to be stocking up on now. That stuff tends, like the chicken, we obviously, you know, KFC's trying to get it all. Yeah. Don't let them. Colonel You get Sanders. some of your frozen chickens Can you now. freeze fruit snacks? I don't know. I we gotta look into it. I know you can freeze dry them. I bet you can But can you freeze, freeze them? them? I wouldn't doubt it. We freeze bread. You yeah, know, I do too, yeah. Bread loaves, and mm-hmm. then, um, like a lot of stuff... Experiment with it. Yeah, just freeze, freeze stuff. It. Just freeze a bunch of stuff. Just take a Saturday pick and start up, freezing pick shit. Up. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> pick you up another chest freezer. Who you know? Yeah. Throw all kinds of stuff in there. Mm. But then, um, that was the thing that uh, that like hit me the hardest when the pandemic uh, when it happened. I was like, I didn't have yeast and stuff to cook. I'm like, what am I doing? Like Idiot. I have all these like <laughs> twenty five year shelf life yeah. stuff, and I'm like, I don't want to touch any of that. Mm. So. Make sure you get, you know, rice, flour, things to cook and prepare yeah. different meals that are not like the freeze-dried stuff that you don't want to touch right now. For sure, yeah. But anyways, yeah. So all the stuff that you're going to the store for way too often anyway, do yeah. it right now. Yeah, just get some extras. And the other thing is make sure your medical needs, like Kobe was talking about, when medicine becomes, you know, scarce and the certain medicines you take, mm-hmm. you're dead man. If you haven't learned how to get off from them or uh, found any way to get off from them, yeah. if you have to. But if you can't and they're life sustaining, make sure you have a good supply of those. See, I've and, had a lot of people ask online. Mm-hmm. We did I did a video on TikTok where I talked a little bit about this mm-hmm. and everybody's like, Well, how am I supposed to get extra meds? I don't know how to do it. Yeah. My pharmacist will only give me so much. Yeah. You know, so how do you do that? You, so um a lot of times you can talk yes, you you're you're likely to only be able to get like a 90 day supply, mm-hmm. but that's still better than most. Like most people just keep getting their 30 day and they go yeah. to the pharmacy every, most medicines that you're prescribed <clears throat> that your insurance covers will pay for 90, just as the same price as a 30 as a 30 or a little bit more. Yeah. Other things you can do is you can use good RX. Mm-hmm. Like if your insurance won't allow you to get 90 days, tell your, tell your provider, you know, can I get 90 day supply of this unless it's a controlled substance, but yeah. If you know, if you're taking metformin or something like that, just ask for a 90 day. Even if your insurance won't pay for it, just show the pharmacist like a good RX, and typically it's it's cheap. So okay, but can you get a sub or a prescription for additional? Like if you, if it was something that wasn't a controlled substance, you know, could you get the 90 days and say, hey, can I get an extra 30 so I could put it? Most in my- of the time, yeah. Like that wouldn't be a big deal for most no, stuff, right? No. So you just have um, to ask. It's it's out of provider, you know, comfort and preference. Yeah. But like I've written for metformin for six months for some people. Mm. I guess they give it in a five gallon. I don't bucket. know what I that is. Know. So what is it? Just for diabetes, you know. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. But a lot of meds you can get you can you can get more and the provider will, will try and write what they're comfortable with. I write for ninety days, mm-hmm. you know, pretty often if it's not something that's So you just gotta ask, basically. Yeah. yeah. It takes just a little so. bit more work. Just go ask your your provider and yeah. And yeah. if you're yeah, if the pharmacist is being a douchebag, just be like, yeah. I'm gonna pay cash for it. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, then, and you can also, depending on what med it is, right? You could you know skip a day here and there, 
right. depending on. I mean, obviously, not, there I'm are not no giving that. extended release. Yeah, I'm not saying do that, but it's not medical advice. It's but. not medical advice, but if depending on what it is, you could right, right, right. and build up a little bit. And of one a of supply. the most important things that people don't do that drive me nuts is they don't understand what they're taking. Yeah, they don't know why they're taking it. Mm-hmm. They don't know what alternatives there are. Because if one, you know, for a while, a tenolol wasn't available, mm, and people yeah. were like, I don't know what to do. Like, well, there's Get something else. there's metoprolol, yeah. there's, there's different ones that work similar. You need to understand what you're taking it for. Yeah. If you don't, then you're doomed. I got the blue pill from the doctor about two years That's, ago. Yeah. I take it's it. oval shaped, it's got an L on it. Yeah. I put it in my butt. I yeah. don't know which one it is. I keep putting it in there. I don't, it doesn't dissolve, keep the, pooping it out. <laughs> figure i'd just keep but know what it is know what alternatives can be used that's always good to pick up a book that has like different medical like you can get a nursing book on um uh amazon that'll like make sure it's not that kind of nursing yeah don't get the right nursing not the booby nursing (laughs) yeah (laughs) but you can get those that have the medications i imagine if i ordered that on amazon it's on the counter i go my wife is like uh, Why'd you get his book? <laughs> you got pictures in it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just There's what? no age limit. <laughs> they let anybody order them. <laughs> I don't know. But um, one other thing is like medical good, like medical equipment. Yeah. CPAP machines. Like I have a ton of people who come in like I've been duct taping this tube on here. I'm like, <laughs> come on. Like, just get a hold of us. I had to use the hose from the front yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I understand, like, it's a it's a pain in the butt to come in and have sure. us order it and do all that, but make sure all that stuff's, like, in tippy-top shape or up-to-date, yeah. and make sure if you got a hole in your hose that you <laughs> get it, like, the proper equipment changed out. Yeah. And and look online for different parts that you can have available to fix those things. So, sure, yeah. But, yeah, if you rely on medical devices and medical, uh, and medicines, like, work with your provider, talk to them about, you know, I just... I want to be prepared. Yeah. I don't want to see your face all the time. How can we do that? So That's most of idea. them will do it. So then let's look at kind of like the medium term. You kind of have your basic needs met. You know, you've got the next two to three weeks. You can kind of broaden your scope to stuff that might be a little bit lesser needs, but could really be impacted with a supply chain disruption. Um, so, you know, invest in those hard goods for the long term. If you have the cash on hand, but look, don't go into debt for this. Yeah. I, I feel like I need to put that little asterisk on everything we say. There's no reason to go into debt for any of this. Okay. Do what you can. Um, go ahead and make, you know, those practical purchases that you've kind of been considering. Maybe it's a generator, maybe like Cam said, a deep freezer, um, or use your washing machine or your dryer, or they getting old, those things that maybe if the supply chain does get disrupted and one of them break, or you don't have them, it'd be a bad deal. Right. So think about those things and make those purchases if it makes sense. Um, you know, learn how to preserve, preserve food. So maybe that's canning or get a dehydrator or whatever that might be. It's just another buy a bunch of salt, buy a bunch of salt. <laughs> that's right. It's like Cam said, buy a I bunch of salt. Cover everything in salt. Yeah. I, I do it anyways. You know, it's got salt. Leftovers, there. cover it in salt. I, I don't even have to put it in the fridge. <laughs> I just leave it in the pan and put a bunch of salt on there. <laughs> Wife hates it. Smart. Yeah. She smart. doesn't like it, but smart. she don't know. Just working salt smart. everywhere. Yeah. Where's the meat in there? <laughs> Where'd that lasagna? I had it in there yesterday. <laughs> Gotta get that. Salt shriveled up into it. I can just put, salt those noodles, good, though. put those noodles back in the bag and cook them later. Yeah, and then you got salt that tastes like lasagna or pizza oh, or whatever. Delicious. It's great. It's just a, it's a system I've got, and I've been working on it. Um, uh, another thing you can do is shopping local. You know, make those connections with local producers. Yeah. So that you're not, we're, you're not trying to Amazon get stuff. Amazon doesn't need it anymore. But. Yeah, they don't. And whether that be food, like you know, a local vegetable grower, maybe you've got that local farmers market. That's mm-hmm. a great place to start making connections. That's true. Right. Um, local meat producers. Uh, local microchip producers. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just Man, saying. Man, if only I could make <laughs> I semiconductors. Woo, I'm killing it. My Etsy shop would go nuts. <laughs> you know? But so just start making you those. see me on the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. PA to semiconductor producer. Business man magazine. <laughs> Business man. Love those. Um, yeah, so think about making those local connections because it's it's going to make a world of difference. Yeah. You know, um, 
you know, when we talked about fuel, invest in some gas cans, store some fuel at home. It is a pain in the butt. It's like one of the hardest things for me to do is to continue to um, cycle through fuel, you know, get them all. uh, It's so hard. Yeah. When my lawnmower runs out, I'm like, well, I ain't mowing for a couple weeks. I guess I'll mow next year. (laughs) I guess that's where we are, you know. You can use that for stuffing or you can use it for (laughs) padding. Exactly. Let the grass grow. But get those, you know, <clears throat> you're going to want fuel for your, your automobiles, your generators, your, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, and then think about, you know, keep that gas tank over half. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. It's, it, it will help. I promise you. I ain't lying about Mm-mm-mm. it. Um, you start gardening, you know, make that, make that a hobby, make it that something that's fun. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but you know, having that extra little food supply. Yeah. You know, feel like. A superhero, right? When you ain't got nothing to eat, and you pick your jalapenos out mm-hmm. and jump on them. Yeah, learn it's gonna how be to bottle great. terrorism. It is terrorism, <laughs> but you got That's a risk you got to take. Yeah, you get yeah. on a blacklist, but you're getting food. <laughs> it's great. I but yeah, I seriously this winter I want to try and and start growing some stuff indoors because you can get yeah. on Amazon those little growing lights of like yeah. purple and blue. Mm-hmm. Got to look into it. Do it. I'll be smart about Might it. Might as well. Uh, start thinking about the community you have around you. You're going to need some support, especially if something goes to, you know, a month or two months. Everybody's going to have to we'll look out for each other. You're yeah. going to have to have people helping people. That's the only way to get through it. Prepper groups, whatever that means. You know, work on your family. Get a family. Yeah. I don't know. You know, <laughs> make sure you got one. You know, your church, your local government, your yeah. friends. So start talking about these things. Let them know, hey. Shit's weird. Yeah. All right? Yeah. We got to figure this out. We got to know how to make it through if it's a couple of months. Right. Um, Luckily, if you're part of a church, hmm? you probably don't need to go out and ask for help. They're mm-hmm. going to be bothering you all the time. Yeah. You're, I'm asking them to not help me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've got it. But seriously, but church, just, they yeah. do have a really good network of helping. It's a great network. over each other. Yeah, so think about that as part of Join your Join a church plan. is what we're saying. Yeah, get to church. Get to a church. Don't care what it is. Yeah. Scientology. They help you. Catholicism. <laughs> Judaism. I'm about Scientology, but hey. They're, you they're all Float great. your boat. Whatever floats your boat. Get her done. Um, You know, maybe it's great to think about fuel-efficient vehicles. Yeah. You know, you're, you're driving that 1982 Ford F-250, getting about three miles a gallon. Mine gets three and a half because it's an F-150. Beautiful. Um, it, Maybe it's time to think about something that gets better gas mileage. Right. It's it's a, an investment that you can make. It's going to help you. Yeah. Right? So uh, think about that. Um, And then think about just all the other goods that you can start stockpiling. Toiletries. I mean, we saw during this pandemic the weird crap that was hard to find, right? Even like ibuprofen str- was gone. For yeah, a while. that's what I was gonna say. Even like OTC meds for yeah. uh, pain and things like you couldn't get. You had to go buy Tylenol, which is worthless. <laughs> you might as well be eating your grass clippings at that point. <laughs> bark. <laughs> you got me aspirin in here. Yeah, pretty sure this is just as good as an extra strength Tylenol. <laughs> pretty sure. Sugar probably is as good as it, it probably, Tylenol in yeah. terms of pain control. Um, you know, so those are some <clears throat> things that you can start building up a supply. Even like you know, toothpaste. Uh, soap, body wash, all that kind of stuff, women's things, uh, all the stuff that they got to have, uh, hair serum, face serum, hair serum. <laughs> hand serum. <laughs> Is this conditioner serum? Blonde hair serum, dark yeah, hair that's serum. True. Uh, Maintenance color serum. Color serum, dry hair serum, <laughs> wet hair serum, <laughs> <laughs> long hair serum, short hair serum. Fade protection serum and yeah. elixir. Wednesday hair serum, Tuesday wet hair serum, church wet hair serum, church Thursday hair serum. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something for everything. Oh, Lord God, stop! <laughs> All the days of the weeks. Anyways, yeah. you can build that little supply up. Uh, building supplies, and I'm not talking about going and buying trusses or something like that, but <laughs> some wood. <laughs> you building a house? Guess what? Nah, I just I just saving it. I have in case. sixteen crates of two by fours back here. Yeah. Two by fives. Two, two by sixes. <laughs> they got them all. I got everyone. Just bought a whole bunch of them. Yeah. But, you know, nails and screws. Yeah. Um, all those little things that you need to, to fix stuff, yeah. to build stuff. It's great to have some of that stuff on hand. You know, it's great. Um, and then, you know, is inflation part of your issue? Is is Are just the cost of goods going up because of this and the, and the inflation is happening? So 
I always want to go back to some sort of a financial preparedness. Uh, make some anti-inflation investments, whatever that might yeah, be. Like I'm not going to tell you what that is because I am not a financial advisor. But look into it. You know, is it precious metals? Is it crypto? Is it real estate? Is it certain stocks? Pure cash. Um, if you're just all your money's in pure cash, you're losing money. Right. You just are. so you know. Yeah. Um, you got inflation because you want that tangible, like yeah. immediate mm-hmm. use. But yeah, it's not making you. Any you money. have to have cash on hand. Obviously, you got to do that if you're a prepper. Something you got to do. But think about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. All right. How about long term? Yeah, I won't go too long about long term. Okay. Because you guys are sick of this, but no, they're not. They're they're loving it. <clears throat> so yeah, you're gonna hit those short term. Get the stuff you can get available now at your stores. You know, mm-hmm. stock about. It. Then you can go into the medium, like Kobe just explained. But now, you got that stuff all queued up. You're all ready. You're uh-huh. good. Let's look at how long is this gonna last. I'm gonna. I want stuff. That's going to give me more protection for longer. Yeah. So you're going to start looking at your 25 year shelf life foods. Okay. This is where you're going to start looking at like, you know, Patriot Pantry and mm-hmm. Augustine Foods. All Nutrient that survival. Nutrient survival. I actually, yes. I've, the, we got some I of this. Haven't, I've been meaning to eat that, um, like the granola ones or mm-hmm. whatever. But you said the eggs. I tried the good. eggs and they were great. Yeah. Actually, I was pretty, pretty impressed. And that's what's so, like, you have a billion eggs with your chickens, but like mm, I don't have chickens anymore. Oh, did you get rid of them? Yeah. Oh no, you gotta go. Yeah, it's it's a supply chain issue. But the powdered eggs are so nice. They are. They're great. Because it's like that kind of stuff is huge. Yeah. Because you can um it takes up way less space. It does. So yeah. but you don't want to tap into it very soon. So no. But start working on your twenty five year shelf life foods and mm-hmm. things like that. Work on a, a bigger supply of water that you can store, you know, in your yeah. basement, like mm-hmm. the, the fifty five gallons, those are available. Those, you know, who knows those, the, like those big barrels, they might become scarce in the yeah. production of the the vinyl and all that crap. Um, generator, obviously, mm-hmm. ways to keep power to your house if the grid goes down and things like that. Learn how to do some indoor growing, like I was mentioning. You know, <clears throat> right now it's winter, so experiment with some of those. You know, with um, the uh, aeroponics or hydroponics. It's a good time. You got nothing yeah. else to do. Hooked on ponics. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You can order that system. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then work on skills. Yeah. The more skills you have, the more valuable you are. Skills pay the bills, bro. They do. You know what they I mean? Do. The more things you can learn how to do, that's a that's a bartering resource. Yeah. You know, you can say, Hey, I'll build you a house mm-hmm. if you give me two bags of flour. It's pretty not, it's not very a good. Great deal, but no. it'll work. Yeah. Um, learn to hunt, fish forage, learn mm-hmm. to prepare the meat, learn to store the meat, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, like I was saying with the skills, this is a good time to expand your knowledge. People yeah. talk about books and how bulky and how, but you can always turn to your library. You can. <laughs> if you don't have time to learn the skill now, if you get quarantined or, or cooped up, then you have these available things to continue learning. That's great. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, uh, like Kobe was saying, it, it's a good time to learn how to like start to become more independent of the system. Gardening, you can you know raise some animals, raise some crops, things mm-hmm. like that, and just learning how to deal with uh, all of that production that doesn't require the supply chain. Yeah, you can create your own system and working with neighbors, learning skills from them. And you guys can set up your own. Um, system you know yeah well that's the thing there's always like a neighbor that's really good at gardening or really good at raising chickens or right or so you should have a resource near you right that's the nice thing yeah that's what that's like when you talk about you know that community around you make sure you know the people that have those skills yeah you know yeah and if you don't if you don't try and experiment with these things like the gardening and what seeds grow and, yeah. and things like that. Like you'll, you'll never, it'll be tough. You can buy a bunch of crap that is just not going to yeah. work out. Yeah. So you've definitely got to put these things to use. And that's, that's where you've got all these things that kind of give you a comfortable time frame for your family. And then you start working on those like real true prepper skills mm-hmm. and get the long term shelf life foods and the larger amounts of water supply. So, so anyways, those that's that's it. That's where you start working on everything. Yeah, is right now. Right now is the time. You need to have it right. done by January first. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, guys, supply chain disruptions—they're happening now. Yeah. They're going to be happening <clears throat> in the near future, as far as we can see. And the estimates are, you know, about 2023 is when they might start letting up. But again, we don't know. Like yeah. Cam said, you know, winter is coming. 
It's, Sickness is way worse this year than yeah. it was last year. So things could only get worse. So it's it's a time to to look at those things to get prepared in case it does get worse. Yeah, I would hope that there's people out there who saw what happened at the beginning of COVID and said, "Okay, I need to actually get yeah. ready." You Hopefully, know? you guys have been getting ready. Yes, but I I think, I mean, from all of this that we talked about today, yes, it's like I went to the grocery store yesterday and most everything is stocked up. Yeah. So now, now's the time to get it. yourself up. Yes, do it, it now. It is the best time to do it because we just don't know where this is going. And again, we're not the kind that like to scare people. We're not fear mongers. We're not fear mongers, but we are um, level-headed and we like to look at things like yeah. it, it happened. The, the writing's on the wall. It could happen. It could get worse. So yeah, easily uh, start figuring it out right now. Mm-hmm. Get prepared. Guys, today's podcast is brought to you by TACPAC, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful, professional-grade stuff inside. Use our code CASUALPREPPERS and get a free separate bag sent of EDC gear along with your first month's TACPAC. Head to TACPAC.com. Use our code CASUALPREPPERS. Their last one was awesome. Yeah, it really just got, was. Have you tried those cinnamon toothpicks yet? No. <laughs> Damn. Those look <laughs> so good. I need to try those, yeah. <laughs> you need to bring some in next time. We'll do a <clears throat> whole podcast. I want to open a little bag. That's right. It's preparedness you know that's right it's time for the quick and dirty medical tip <clears throat> okay here we go here we go so we're going into winter yeah and we all know that winter is long and depressing yep and so there are ways without having to go to a clinic and talk to a provider unless i'm you know there's definitely a need for that and yeah there's there's definitely a time when you should but some of us are like I kind of, you know, teeter back and forth. I get a little bit depressed. Mm-hmm. What ways can I, like, what are things I can do to prevent depression? You know, exercise is a huge thing. But <laughs> when you're depressed and you don't feel motivated, you're not going to exercise. It's hard. So you're not going to get that benefit. So you need other things. And that's what I want to talk about. Just but some other things. if you will, if you can get yourself to exercise, go exercise. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's humongous. Like, I'm not saying it's, like, yeah. it's one of the best things you can do. Yes. But when you're depressed and down, it's hard to get motivated to do that. Yeah, for sure. So one thing that you can do, and if you, you don't feel that you're at a point that you need to meet with a professional healthcare provider, omega-3s and vitamin D are mm-hmm. like massive. Like they're, they're huge benefits to em- emotional health, which is kind of a weird thing. Yeah. You're going to take an oil that helps. Yeah. So studies have shown, and, and I have up here a Harvard study showing the benefits of omega-3s to improve depression. Mm. So omega-3s, you know, from fish and all that, but you can get the supplements and they're available anywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you want to get a high quality one. But the the important part is you want to make sure it has a, a, a large percent of EPA. You know, the three different, ty- there's two different types of uh, omega-3s. You would think there'd be three because it's omega-3s. <laughs> yeah. But there's EPA and then there's DHA. And mm. EPA is much more effective with depression than DHA. Hmm. So when you get those supplements, you want to get those. Uh, Omega-3s cross the the blood-brain barrier. Mm -hmm. So they actually help with depression in terms of some of the mechanisms they believe, like reduces inflammation in the brain, helps with serotonin. The other thing that's kind of cool is if you do take an antidepressant, and sometimes you wonder if it's still effective, it's been shown that uh, the EPA helps with serotonin and the effectiveness of antidepressants. Oh, interesting. This is Harvard studies. This is good stuff. Um, So, yeah, a readily available over-the-counter oil, omega-3s, can help combat depression. And you never know. SHTF can't see providers. Like, you want to have these things available, and you probably want to start taking them now to help. They're, They're healthy for, you know... Heart, they're healthy for depression. Hard thing about those is they're oil, right? Yes. And so and there are some that are less fishy tasting. Mm-hmm. Well, and then the shelf life is a little fishy, <clears throat> right? It is. It is. So that's why you probably want to get them and just start using them. Yeah. And just kind of cycle mm-hmm. them out. But you want to shoot for, like they tested anywhere from like one gram a day to 10 grams a day, which Ooh. I don't know how anybody took 10 grams a that's day. That's like a lunch. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have my omega-3 for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> just a gallon jug <laughs> yeah but um the studies showed that like you want to be taking around one to two grams a day hmm. and the omega-3s help with your triglycerides and they help with cardiac health so but shoot for one to two grams a day 
one gram a day is probably the most common and the most tolerable. You're not mm-hmm. going to get a lot of fishy, burpy yeah. aftertaste as much. Um, and the other thing is vitamin D. Like I check people oh, so big. all the time on vitamin D. And if you live in the north, you know, the northwest is like the worst. Yeah. Because it's cloudy. You don't get enough sun. And But even where we're at in North America, we just don't get as much as, you know, like Brazil and yeah. Colombia and all that. Yeah. They, they're closer to the equator. But um, so I, I check people all the time and I'd say 60% or more of people are deficient in vitamin D. Mm. And that has been proven to be healthy for your immune system, combat COVID. And it also helps with depression. Yeah. So anyways, I thought it was just kind of a good thing to talk about now because winter's coming. That's awesome. Depression sets in. Omega-3s are excellent if you're taking antidepressants and if you're not because it helps. Mm -hmm. And then the vitamin D immunity um, and it's an antidepressant too. Obviously, go to a healthcare provider if you're suicidal. Yes, please do that. <laughs> These aren't going to help for that. No. But they do. They have been proven to help for depression and cool. all that. So uh, easy thing to get. Go awesome. get it. Awesome. And vitamin D, you could have <clears throat> some long shelf life stuff. Yeah. Right? And vitamin D, you want to be shooting for like one to 2,000 units okay. a day. Most of like multivitamins only have like two or 300. Oh, so you just okay. want to go a little higher than that. A little higher. Cool. There you go. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, make sure to follow us on all the platforms that we are. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, where uh, else? TikTok, Twitter, all the places. Okay. Uh, thank you and stay survived.